So Fantex, Fantex wants to sell you guys a power supply with absolutely no cables. Well, it's not absolutely because there is one cable. That is the power cable that plugs into the wall. So with that being said, I do want to take a moment and thank Fantex, Thermaltake, Cooler Master and MSI for sponsoring our Computex 2023 trip. But there, this is not some sort of grand scheme to change the game in any way, shape or form by having sort of like wireless power. No, no, this is actually a pretty good idea in my opinion. So what they're doing here is they're teaming up with CableMod to supply the cables for these power supplies, which are based on Seasonic designs. Now, CableMod already has the cables ready for most Seasonic models, including the ones that these Fantex power supplies are based off of. So what Fantex wants to do here is pretty simple. You get the power supply and none of those ultra expensive cables that are included with a standard power supply. Now I'm saying ultra expensive because the amount of copper wire and everything else that goes into supplying cables with the power supply actually drives up that cost. Now, if you want to actually just build a basic system nowadays, most of the times you don't need the Molex, you don't need the SATA cables, you don't need all of that added cost that's added to the power supply itself. So they are just selling you the box, the power supply box itself, and you get to populate the cables. Part of this is, of course, that partnership with Cable Mod. Luckily, Cable Mod cables are available in most regions, and you can customize to your heart's content. The other nice thing is that what Fantex will also be doing is teaming up with Cable Mod and making specific kits for their cases, so a proper length for something like the NV7 or the NV9 that you saw in Dimitri's videos or some of their Evolve series. So basically you don't have to worry about these super long cables going everywhere in your case and messing up a bunch of cable management. There's going to be cases that line up perfectly with those cable lengths. The other thing that I really need to mention here is that there are regions where cable mod cables just aren't available at all. It doesn't matter if it's through Amazon and it really doesn't matter if it's through Cable Mod themselves. And in those regions, what's going to happen is Fantex will include their own cable kits as a separate add-on to these power supplies. But like you might be asking yourselves how much money you are going to be saving. So I should mention that these power supplies that aren't coming with cables are only going to be focused on the Revolt series. So slightly higher end models in 1,000, 1,200, and 1,600 watt models with platinum or titanium. Platinum, 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 titanium. Damn it, I got it right. Platinum and titanium models. So they are not cheap to begin with. But I mean, look, these are starting normally with the cables from $200 all the way up to $400 power supplies. And what we're talking about here for savings is between $40 and about $90. So almost 20% off the price of those power supplies. So if you go onto Cable Mod's site and you buy the cables that you actually just need for your build, you're gonna end up saving money most of the time. But you know what you're gonna end up spending more money on, and that is the new D30-140. So the D30-140, look, you guys asked for 140 millimeter fans, and I have it on pretty good authority that a D30-140 might be coming too. Am I allowed to say that? They said yes, their boss isn't here. But anyways, so it is basically, guess what, an upsized version of the D30-120 that I looked at a little while ago. That's about it. Basically, all of the stats increase. You basically get better static pressure. You get better airflow. Of course, the focus is still on static pressure because this is intended as a radiator fan. It's also available in your regular and reverse modes. But now that they have, the D30-120 and the D30-140, well, guess what? They're coming with, out with new Glacier Series AIOs with those fans. So both in 140 millimeter form factor and 120 millimeter form factor. But before I get into the actual setups themselves, I, what, what's so special about the setups? Ah, whatever. But what's so new about this Glacier 1 D30 series? So there's a couple of things. So first of all, you get that new pump head that makes it sort of look like the D30 itself. So a little bit more holistic overall design aesthetic. The other thing that isn't so apparent is that Fantex is not using Asetek for this AIO. Who are they using? Well, they're not really gonna say. I'm pretty sure that you can sort of thought process your way through it about 
who other than Asetek manufactures these things. But anyways, why not use that new Asetek Gen 8 pump that everybody else and their mothers are using right now? Well, for Fanatex, it really comes down to the size of Finstack in this new AIO. Because these new processors are out there, so the Ryzen 7000 series and Intel 13th gen, sort of produce heat in a very different way than previous generations, they thought that a larger extended Finstack with in the AIO would actually help, especially when it comes to where that contact plate makes contact with the IHS on today's processors. So that larger fin stack on top of the contact plate dissipates heat faster and in a more efficient manner from newer processors. So anyways, these new AIOs are going to be, of course, following the D30 format. So basically what you're looking at is a 240 millimeter AIO, a 360 and a 420. Fantex is also thinking about bringing out a 480, but that's gonna be sometime in the future. Pricing for these, it ranges from about $150 to about $190 US. So anyways, that is the quick overview of some power supply stuff. And of course the new D3140 and some new AIOs from Fantex. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one from Computex 2023. Take care guys.